you look at these words, authenticity, audio, authority, audience, they all come from the same ancient Greek word. And oh. they stem, yeah, the same etymological root, which is AU, mm. which in ancient Greek, which I'm no classical scholar, but the word actually means to feel, to perceive. So all of those words, they share wow. the same root, to feel, to perceive. Mm. So if you think about that audio and audience and authority, I perceive you as an authority or mm. perceive you as authentic. They're all harnessed in the same origin and they've been with us for thousands of years. And that's what people are seeking out right now, real human connection. And that's what people are missing. Welcome, Graham. It's so nice to have you on my show, Jagged with Jasravi. Conversations at the edge with thought leaders from the branding and the marketing world. Yeah, thank you, Jasravi. Very excited to be here and be at the edge. Yeah, totally. Right now, let's just look at the environment and, you know, why is it that we are saying that this is the new age of audio? What is it saying mm. about our society's evolution in terms of uh, where we are moving, where we are seeking, what we value? The new age of audio really is a response to what we've experienced in the last at least 18 months, if not the last decade. There's a real shift, there's a real change in how we communicate. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, there's a real digitalization of communication, which is making it easier to communicate, but reducing the value. Uh, if you go back to, for example, January 2020, we were talking about the trade war between US and China. Mm. But now we're talking about a very different world where people are saying vaccinations and work from home. And mm. so much has changed about work and about everything. Like if yeah. you've got children, school has changed completely now. University has changed. People are asking questions about career. Mm. So a big part of this, Jazz Ravi, is that the world has been disconnected increasingly. Mm. That loneliness, people are talking about mental wellness now yeah. as a thing. Mm. And work from home means you're not connected to your colleagues like you used to. You don't have the randomness of those loose conversations at the water cooler or lunchtime, which make a big part of our psyche and our, yeah. our well-being right yeah. so we're very disconnected and i feel that we're turning to audio mm. as a way of reconnecting mm. with people at a fundamental level like you and i can have mm. this interesting conversation about what we care about yeah. and you can't get that today you can't where can you speak to somebody for an hour just about yeah. what you really care about yeah. and if you look at what's happening with podcasts it's it's all the things people care about are coming out on the platform. Mm. Everything from relationships to, you know, inclusiveness to mental wellness to mm. true crime, <laughs> you know, all these, <laughs> these things that don't have a lot of prominence on mainstream media. Mm. So audio really is the base of our human connection. Yeah. Think about it. Uh, mm. well, I'll give you an example. Like mm. when my wife gets annoyed with me, She'll say, you're not listening. It's not, she never says, you're not looking at me. <laughs> She'll say, you're not listening. I'm like, oh, sorry. But it just goes to show like listening's key to relationships, isn't it? When somebody listens to you, you feel heard, you feel valued, mm. right? When you talk about the voice of the customer and branding and marketing yeah. and listening to people is the fundamental and it, it even you know, the first experience we ever had of another human being was the sound of mm. somebody's heartbeat or their voice, right? Mm. That is fundamental to connection. And it's the root. I mean, think about it in social media. If you see a video mm. with poor sound, you think that's terrible. But if you see a uh, poor video, but the sound's okay, it's fine. If you see, for example, video without sound, that's mm. like surveillance, isn't it? That's very creepy. But sound without yeah. video, it's, it's beautiful, it's music, it's emotion, it's feeling, and it, we connect through music. If I, I, I'd like you to also talk how uh, the, the need for authenticity 
and storytelling, you know, is uh, that is fueling uh, the rise of the audio and the audio is, uh, you know, meeting that need of ours. How is this dynamic going about? Because when we talk about brands, Graham, the authentic is such mm. a word, such a buzzword, an abused word also. But it is, it is the need. I mean, the young people anyways are put off by anything that's fake or cultivated or you know, not real. We're living in a very fake world in the sense that it's easy to create communication and connection, which isn't real. And it mm. started some years ago when social media co-opted the language of communication and connection, mm. liking friends. These aren't real friends mm. or even co-opting the heart, you know, as a symbol of liking. Yeah. But, you know, when you love something, it's a very strong connection. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, you don't very freely give out your deepest connections and feelings to people. Mm -hmm. And yet we very willfully used that and hijacked it for social media, that sort of like button. And therefore, for many years, we've been co-opting relationships and communication between people and using it in business and to the extent now where it's very easy to pretend to be something and whether that's for example the filters on your phone on instagram and TikTok, mm -hmm. or a chat bot on the the website that's pretending to be somebody called graham and talking <laughs> to you and you know that just infuriates us that they're pretending why don't you just say you're a bot and be done with it. I'm happy with that. But if you're pretending mm. to be a human, mm. we feel cheated. And increasingly, especially young people want that transparency. They want to know who are you? What do you stand for? What are your views mm. on diversity or climate change or renewable energy, whatever it may be? They want to know. And you look at Edelman's trust barometer every year, they publish a survey of what people feel about authority and thought leadership. And the numbers show that people want their CEOs to speak out. I think something like 80% of people surveyed said they wanted CEOs to speak out. These are employees mm -hmm. speak out on issues, have a voice. Mm -hmm. So there is a real need for authenticity because we live in a very fake time. You know, you know, there are the issues with content, which are generated by machine learning. And for example, you look at GPT-3 is a machine learning library, which is kind of new, and it writes very good articles, mm. right? And this is getting scary because the actual articles GPT-3 can write can pass as a human being. Mm. Not, not, if you analyze them under a microscope, they won't pass. But if you're just casually browsing, you're now looking at something that's be automated. And that's generated by OpenAI, which is owned by Elon Musk. Now, here's the interesting thing is GPT-3 is one generation of AI. The next generation, it's called MUM, M-U-M, M-U-M, sorry, from Google, is a thousand times more powerful than GPT-3. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about all the content that's coming out generated by machine. We're not sure if these people are real. Mm -hmm. So think about all of this adding up that People want to know what's real and what's not. People want to know who's real yeah. and what's not. So authenticity is a thing mm. because people want it because it's a natural internal yearning, mm. a need, a gauge of trust. And yeah. you say about authenticity um, and audio as well. Well, there's a, there's a, a, a strong reason for that you look at these words authenticity audio authority audience they all come from the same ancient greek word and oh. they stem from, yeah the same etymological root, which is au hmm. which in ancient greek which i'm no classical scholar but the word actually means to feel to perceive so all of those words they share wow. the same root to feel to perceive so if you think about that audio and audience and authority, I perceive you as an authority or perceive you as authentic. They're all 
harnessed in the same origin and they've been with us for thousands of years and that's what people are seeking out right now real human connection and that's what people are missing you want to fully explain that's so original <laughs> Thank okay you. so you love languages uh, as well okay great <laughs> i love this word etymology the moment someone comes yeah. to that i'm like you really know <laughs> well, it's a bigger truth isn't it about us yeah. and humans hmm. that isn't born in the world of social media you think about it like you know the human history is written history 20000 years old and yet we've really only had social media for 0.1% of that so 99.9% of our collated and documented history mm. has not been digital and that's how our social brains evolved you know and connected with people so we we can't discount that you know we yeah. don't just live in this last 0.1% of human history we have to think about everything that came before as well because that's us that's our hard wire you know how we're born to think and interact yeah. you know as you're speaking and i'm like isn't that amazing that there there has to be progress we have to move forward we are going to develop technology and yet there are certain things that are going to even become more important and how do we balance that you know uh, in terms of what's more important and what mm. is just a tool what we will not compromise on so in that you know uh, context you also uh, you know uh, i was listening to one of your episodes about branding and uh, which is branding is dead you know <laughs> it was so uh, briefly if you had to just uh, mention few aspects of mm. why i mean one could say that okay brand is transformed you know how mm. how it communicates and how it builds a relationship with you what you seek from it everything is different so it's not the entity it used to be and hence brand is dead or it mm. is transformed into something else it's a di different avatar either ways you know the the pointers that you're making are so real and uh, will resonate with everyone so could you share mm. a few aspects it, yeah so branding and brand are different in this context let's talk about that so branding is mm. what we used to do for 50 years you know which was tv campaigns creating these monolithic narratives about brands and outsourcing it to a creative agency a world which you know and world which i know very well how it operates and it was very good at it it was very effective if you got the right creative you could transform a brand you could turn something that didn't exist into a household name hmm. by virtue of the creative agency that was branding and yet now we're in this time where you don't have these monolithic narratives about brands mm -hmm. you know i can't say for example you know let's say i've got a soda brand like a thumbs up for example or you know i'm dealing with a, a global templated household name brand like a tide or a uh, coke for example mm -hmm. now it's happening brand is happening it's out there mm. there's dialogue people are talking about this it's not like one monolithic narrative which everybody has to mm. listen to it's thousands of conversations about mm. this brand and brand happens it's an experience now and i think what the shift has been is from a very centralized monolithic narrative to a very decentralized pluralistic and inclusive narrative about a brand yeah. and that's the shift and it's in, in very simple terms, it was like for the last 50 years, branding existed in a tree and there was one bird singing in the tree, but now there's thousands of birds singing in the tree <laughs> and that's the reality now. And like one of those birds is the official brand narrative <laughs> and there's hundreds of competing narratives out there. If you're of a mind where everything has to be templated and controlled, it's going to be hard, but that's why, you know, for the younger generation, it's a lot easier to adapt to that because they're born into that world where there isn't this single way of doing things about a brand. And that's the shift. That's why I'm saying branding is dead. It's not brand isn't dead. Brand is still stronger than ever, mm. but it shifted. Like you say, 
mm. evolved. Mm. And that's what's exciting because I think there's new opportunities and new platforms, new ways mm. of doing it. Mm. Beautifully, beautifully expressed. Um, um, so, uh, Graham, now podcasting. You know, so, you, you, you know, when I saw that page where you have uh, consolidated the ways you can use a podcast for different objectives, communication objectives, mm. um, uh, or business objectives, you know, I mean, that itself was so compelling. Uh, you know, we'll come to India and what you, uh, you know, can tell us about what's happening in India because it's growing very fast. But, you know, uh, I, as, as a, you know, starting out podcaster would like to know and, you know, learn from that. Mm. But, you know, how um, versatile a podcast can be in terms of creating thought leadership or product development, personal brand category, narrow, narrative. Uh, you know, having conversations that matter. I mean, you could you mm. could have a movement alive. You know, uh, you know, you could you could do so much good. Uh, of course, uh, you could profit uh, in your business, but you know, otherwise also campaign awareness, news and analysis. I mean, so many aspects. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I, I wasn't present to all of this. You know, till I read it, and I said, okay, and I have to really think. What are these aspects that I want to um, incorporate? So uh, if you could tell what, uh, what really varies apart from uh, the guests that you call in and, and uh, you know, the topics that you choose, is there any other DNA difference um, in how a podcast, and I don't even know if this is a good question, you know, I'm just thinking mm. aloud. But is there a basic difference in how a podcast creates its path when uh, its objective is different? Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, it is a good question. Is it? And okay. one, yeah, it is because people don't think about it, that they tend to just do a podcast and I want to do a podcast, which is fine. The intrinsic motivations of doing a podcast because you enjoy it. Mm. And it, it's a good way to practice and a good way to develop your um, narratives and your, your stories in a very agile way and get to meet people. So the intrinsic motivations are there. The extrinsic motivations about how does this affect my business, uh, that will impact the podcast long term. So take, for example, the difference between a B2B podcast and a B2C podcast. Mm. A B2C podcast would be more like serial or a Netflix style podcast, mm -hmm. very, um, very much focused at wide mass market. Mm -hmm. And the goal of that is to either sell subscriptions or sell advertising. And therefore, the, the, the content's going to be shaped by that and the style. So it's often very much narrative driven, more like storytelling, more like a documentary. And you know, it's very immersive soundscapes and so on. The B2B podcast, however, is going to be different because the goal of that is about thought leadership, about awareness of the brand, possibly meeting the guests and mm. building a relationship with them, um, selling mm. effectively in a very indirect conceptual way, or positioning yourself as some thought leader in that space. Mm. And therefore the content's gonna be different. It may be more interview based. It may be more uh, based around your key talking points. Mm. And those, evolve in a different way and measure the important thing is how you measure success on both. Mm. So you, in the first instance, if you're doing a B to C podcast, you're doing it because you want to build the, the audience and, you know, get as much advertising real estate as possible. Mm. But in the B to B podcast, you are the advertiser mm. of your own podcast, right? Mm. You have an advertiser, so you don't need one. So now it's a case of how do you connect with people? How do you use this to create meetings? Mm. Uh, you know, to build your personal brand and to get, you know, to frame those narratives that are important to you. So those will diverge over time. A lot of people don't know the difference between the two because it's quite new. Mm. And what are your views about India? You know, why, uh, you know, first of all, where does it fall in, in, in the, yeah. you know, market of podcasting? Where does it stand and why? I'm really you know, bullish on India by virtue of the fact that I'm seeing 
a lot of young content producers step up. Uh, I feel that when you see women step up to the microphone, that's a positive sign that that is here is something that's a fundamental shift. And I would say, the last, <laughs> well, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's great to see you doing this and, you know, seeing female Indians step up because even though there are female Indians in media, they tend to be underrepresented or fulfill a, a particular role. Mm -hmm. And yet actually having them in the driving seat of the narrative mm -hmm. in, in what is, let's face it, a male dominated world and globally in media that that's encouraging. And the last time I've seen this is like my telecoms business in about 2000, 1999, maybe where I saw young, uh, where well, I was living in Japan, young Japanese high school girls driving the mobile industry by, they were the first to start texting globally. Mm. They discovered it and they started using it and they started stepping up and I said, why, why, why is this underrepresented group mm. taking to a technology? Because they could tell their stories in ways which mm. were excluded to them. And so I'm seeing that in India and that's really exciting because that, you know, look at where the mobile industry went over the last 20 years, it just exploded. And that really interests me. And I'll tell you why there was a, there was an event last week. I won't name them. It was a, global in air quotes, uh, podcast event, a builders global, and it took place in Australia, UK and America, and it built itself as a global, um, representation of podcasting. And they didn't have one representative oh. from Asia, you know, 62% of the podcast listenership is in Asia. And I thought that was shocking. I was ashamed. I live in Asia. I've lived in Asia for many years mm. and I like to see Asia put on the map. And I think India will do that for Asia because you've got a hundred million <laughs> listeners, right? That's yeah. just a hundred million. It's just getting started. You know, like you've got, that will grow to 500 million in, in 10 to 15 years. It's going to be an explosion. Mm. So everybody I talk to, I say, watch India because it's the next big thing in podcasting. But in, you know, India a, 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 has a fantastic um, cultural, no, it just has a fantastic storytelling culture, you know, yeah. everything from the Mahabharat <laughs> all the way to the Upanishads and, you know, the, the myths and the, mm. you know, the, the music and the mm. dance and the culture, it has all that. And it's been, you know, we're talking thousands of years. They like yeah. stories, yeah. you know, so that, that's there that's and there. therefore it re resonates very much. But at the same time, I feel the real driver is you've got two input factors. One is, uh, these underrepresented voices, whether it's females or whether it's local voices, you know, you can mm. imagine if you're like a, a local cultural or a local content producer, you want to produce for your market in your language, mm. you know, and they talk about India as being lots of states as opposed yep. to one country. It's very true culturally. Mm. And then the other part is lockdown. You know, people are very isolated Yeah, and you've got a big young population that will reach out. That's going to drive podcasting mm. in india I, I think the genie is out of the bottle mm. it won't go back people won't go back to old ways of doing things so that that's really exciting now one question uh you know where what apple and spotify algorithms want from podcasters in 2021 what's happening now is that it's getting easier to produce and harder to promote a podcast that's mm. the reality yeah. And one's causing the other, obviously, because of competition. We've got yeah. 2.7 million podcasts now. You can't just produce a podcast and get an audience now. Th those mm -hmm. days are over. Yeah. What's happening is that the larger production houses have got more resources. They're getting bigger audiences. And then everybody else is kind of bottom feeding mm -hmm. what's left. What we have to do as podcast hosts is to think about Firstly, our audience. Now you asked me about what will Apple and Spotify be doing? What do they want? Well, they want podcasts that have consistency. They want podcasts that get people not just listening to Graham's episode, but the next one as well. And that's really important because probably the biggest mistake 
podcast hosts make now is relying on their guest to bring an audience or to share. It just doesn't work as much as it used to. What really matters is mm. like what you're doing mm. is defining a narrative around this podcast mm. and keep that narrative going. So mm. you have a defined mission statement and at the edge and jagged edges and you know, it's about you and your exploration and your journey. Mm. Those podcasts get people coming back. You interact with your audience, you talk to them, they talk to you, you creating this connection. That's what Apple and Spotify wants because what they really, really want is mm. to get you to listen as the listener to episode one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, et cetera. They don't yeah. want you to come and listen to episode one and then go away. Binge. They want Netflix style they want you on there all the time. And the only way they can do that is having uh, content that keeps people coming back. So think of your podcast like a radio show. How do you keep people coming back? How do you talk to the listener? And how do you, like they say, call back in radio? How do you get them to listen to episode two? Because if you can't do that, yeah. then Spotify and Apple are just I'm not interested. I'm not going to give you any traffic. I'm not going to promote you. Oh, fly me. What is it? Is, is that yours or is that your son's or your daughter's? This is Jagged with just Ravi's. It could oh, it's be. yours? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, favorite travel destination? Um, it has to be South India. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Your most often used phrase? Um, that's it. <laughs> That Wait, wasn't what? my off, that wasn't a phrase. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about something like that. Uh, I'd say those fillers, they help me think. Okay. Preferred I think food? you're being too kind. You should be shooting me for that. I'm bluffing my way out of it. I'm so interested in knowing. So, okay. Thanks for checking me. Right. So, one thing no one knows about you. Uh, I don't know if I know about me either. Uh, I'm, I'm very good at catching things falling out of. Um, kitchen cabinets. Your favorite podcaster. Jazz Ravi. Uh, okay. What would you tell your 18-year-old self? Um, I would say nothing, just because I wouldn't probably listen to a 50-year-old guy giving me advice. Okay. So if I gave him advice, it'd probably do the opposite thing. I was a bit of a difficult child. Okay. I feel that Jazz Ravi has stepped up and she has been brave and created this podcast and a journey that hopefully you listeners are going to be part of and help support along the way. So you can do that by liking, subscribing on your favorite podcast platform and commenting if you enjoy this or any other episode and feel free to comment on the regular social media platforms. But I feel that this is just the beginning. There's a lot more coming. So please support this podcast and Jazz Ravi and the work she's doing. Thank you so much. It was absolutely wonderful to have you. I learned so much and I am uh, most importantly very excited about my journey. So hmm. all because of you. Thank you. Thank you.